Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco. California. Today has been a pretty busy day and uh, no, it wasn't just because of the Microsoft updates. Now, first of all, we have an interesting and very important vulnerability in Samba. I don't call it critical because it's really more a privilege escalation vulnerability, but what it means is that if you are using Samba as your Active Directory domain controller, then users may change each other's password. The exploit is rather simple for this vulnerability. So this is something you certainly should address if you are running Samba in this configuration. But let's take a look at Microsoft Patch Tuesday. We got patches for over 70 different vulnerabilities. None of them have been exploited. So far, there is a Microsoft Exchange approach escalation vulnerability and an ASP.NET Core denial of service vulnerability that had been disclosed prior to Patch Tuesday, but again, no exploitation yet according to Microsoft. Kind of as usual, a lot of the vulnerabilities affect Microsoft's browsers and scripting engines. Also, a good number of approach escalation vulnerabilities in SharePoint have been addressed in this update as well as about 20, I think, if I counted correctly, Windows kernel information disclosure vulnerabilities. The later are usually not really all that severe, but can be used in order to assist in bypassing features like address space layout randomization. And as usual, we also got an Adobe Flash update that is included by Microsoft in Internet Explorer 11. Now, one of the vulnerabilities that got a little bit more attention here in part because of the company that discovered the vulnerability, did publish some videos and so explaining it in more detail is a vulnerability in the credential security support provider protocol. This is a protocol that can be used by clients to execute remote commands via RDP or WinRM, the remote management mechanism in Windows and essentially the attack, the way it works is that a client tries to connect to a server but a man in the middle can intercept that connection attempt then reply with a malicious command that the client will sign. So the client will not execute that command. The client will just digitally sign this command then the attacker who receives the digital signed copy of that command can now forward it to the server and execute the command on on the server. This has been described as a remote code execution vulnerability. I think, uh, strictly speaking, this may be really more of a approach escalation vulnerability, but either way, it's probably something that you want to patch. Uh, this could be a vulnerability that will be used by attackers for lateral movement after they gained a foothold inside your network. Now, Microsoft today released an update for servers and clients. The problem kind of is uh, you have to update both. You have to update the server and the client. In April, Microsoft will release an update that will actually give you an error message if an updated client tries to connect to a server that hasn't been updated. And this will be followed up by an update in May that will make the enhanced, the fixed configuration, the default. So at this point, you may have issues then connecting to unpatched servers. And then of course, the big announcement today was AMD flaw a number of vulnerabilities in AMD CPUs and chipsets. Now, a lot of discussions about how and why this vulnerability was announced. I tried my best to sort of look at the technical details. At this point, there are no proof of concept exploits public but the advisory states that the company that found the flaws has these proof of concepts available. They just choose not to publish them yet. And a number of 
other individuals have stated that they have looked at these proof of concepts and verified that they actually work. But well, uh, what is it all about? It's really about running code outside the operating system within these processors, like for example, chipsets that are used to control components in your system. Also, due to these vulnerabilities, it's possible to modify the bias on a running system. So we're not talking about uh, sort of flashing the bias here, which usually requires rebooting the system and going through special procedures. Instead, apparently it is possible to modify the bias just by running code without actually having to reboot the system. And in addition, this advisory alleges that AMD actually bought a code from a company that included backdoors and these backdoors are now present on some AMD chipsets. Now AMD learned about these vulnerabilities just a day before they were released so at this point nothing about the possibility of patches yet. Now when you read the advisory I recommend you sort of dive in a little bit deeper and don't just sort of read that fairly hyped language uh, in the beginning. If you dive in a little bit deeper it for example states here that exploiting master key which is one of the vulnerability requires an attacker to be able to reflash the bias with a specially crafted BIOS update. Well, uh, typically in order to flash a BIOS, you first need a signed update. So I don't think uh, this is exploited easily because you first need to be able to validly sign your malicious update. So at this point, I wouldn't overreact to these vulnerabilities. Uh, there isn't really much that you can do anyway at this point. Let's give AMD a little bit time to formulate a response about how they are going to address these vulnerabilities and how they are seeing the impact of these vulnerabilities. And then you have some new insight about the Memcache D denial of service attacks from Remco Verhoef, who did write a guest diary for us uh, on this topic. He's running a set of Memcache D honeypots, and he did it before actually all this hoopla started with these DDoS attacks. Now, a couple of things out of that. Uh, he observed some of the early attempts to sort of launch denial of service attacks like this to spike the databases with data in order to then launch these attacks. The other thing that he's observing is uh, there was a lot of talk about some of these denial of service attacks being used for a ransom. Well, uh, this may actually not exactly be the case. What he observed was before these denial of service attacks started, attackers were often erasing memcached databases and then placing a ransom note that looked like the ransom note that people observed as part of these attacks inside these databases. Now, whenever an attacker now is using one of these ransomed databases for denial of service attacks, they happen to also then send out the ransom note. So that note was present in the, in the database before the denial of service attacks happened and is now just being sent back to the victim with all the other data that happened to be in the database, including, of course, the data that the hacker added. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.